Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a cloud fly-through, and we'll even make it loop. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got five full CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link for a free one month trial that'll give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can test it out and see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so let's start by making some clouds. So we'll come up here and bring in a cube, which is going to serve as a container for all of our clouds. But I wanna shrink this down on the Y axis so we can get just a very thin layer of clouds that we can fly over. And I'll also bring the Z axis down to 140 centimeters, which is obviously not real world scale, but I think it should be fine for this particular effect. So let's turn this into clouds. And we'll do that by putting it into a volume builder. And just hold Alt when you click on that so it's applied as a parent to our cube, like so. Then we'll increase the resolution of our volume by decreasing the voxel size to two centimeters, which gives us a more accurate representation of our cube. And we can now apply some noise to break up this volume and give ourselves some nice random looking clouds. So with the volume builder still selected, let's bring in a field and I think we'll go with the shader field. So let's hold shift to bring that guy in as a child. And that's been applied in there now, but it doesn't seem to have done anything yet because we'll need to go inside there and add a shader to the shader slot here. So let's go with the noise shader, which at first isn't being applied to the whole volume because if we look inside there and grab our shader field, you can see that the creation space is set to box, which means it's only affecting the area within the box, which is why we're only getting noise inside there. So all we need to do is change this to the other option in here, objects below. So now that's affecting the entire cube because the cube is below the shader field in the list here. So we are now kind of getting some cloud-like shapes, but if we change the shader field mode to subtract instead, that noise is going to cut into that volume a bit more and give us a much more cloud-like pattern. And we could refine this further back in here by tweaking the noise shader. So we'll just click on the noise thumbnail here and we can choose from a list of different noise types here. And I think for clouds, the wavy turbulence might be a better option. And we can further refine this down here. So I might stretch the noise along the X axis as well. And I think I'm pretty happy with the basic shape of our clouds now. So let's turn this volume into a mesh and add a bit more detail. So we'll select the volume builder again and back over here, we'll hold Alt and add a volume mesher, which does exactly what the name implies and turns our volume into a mesh. But our clouds are looking a little bit flat. So let's add a bit more detail now that we've got our polygon mesh and make those look a bit more like puffy clouds. So I'm just going to hit Alt G on the keyboard to put all of this stuff into a null object. And we'll come over here and add a deformer to the mix. Let's go with the displacer deformer. And we just need to make sure that that's placed at the bottom of our hierarchy. So it's calculated after everything else. And in our displacer, we also have shader options. So again, we could apply a noise shader to this as well, which has definitely started puffing up those clouds now. So you could go with this if you like the look of those shapes. I think we'll head over to the object tab and just make this a bit more subtle by decreasing the height to two centimeters. And then I'll go back to the noise shader and just decrease the scale of the noise pattern to about 45%, which makes things slightly more puffy, but we can then hold control and drag out a duplicate of our displacer and layer on some larger noise details by making the heights a bit larger on this one. And we might also give it a different noise pattern Let's make this one wavy turbulence as well. And we'll increase the scale of the noise pattern. And I think I'm pretty happy with the shape of our clouds now. Plus this whole system is fully procedural. So you can always come back and tweak any of the settings later on as well. 
So finally, let's put our setup into a connect object. So it's treated as a single object. And in order to render our mesh as nice fluffy clouds, we need to put all of this back into another volume builder. And again, we'll increase the resolution by lowering the voxel size. And we'll take it all the way down to one so it conforms nice and close to the shape of our clouds. And this time, so we can render off some nice soft looking clouds, let's change the volume type to fog instead, which should allow us to render realistic looking volumetric clouds in Octane, which we'll look at very shortly. So all that remains now is to set up a camera and have it flying through our clouds and also make it loop. So I'll just disable the volume builder while we do that so we can see our clouds a bit easier. And in order to have a looping animation, we'll need a few copies of this to fly through. So we'll rename this one to cloud two and make a copy. And this one will be called cloud one, which we'll need to move back here exactly 140 centimeters, which was the length of the Z axis that we set earlier on so that it sits perfectly next to our other clouds. Then we'll make another copy and call it cloud three and move that over behind cloud two. Again, 140 centimeters, so it's perfectly flush with our other clouds. And we'll make one more copy, which we'll call cloud four. And that needs to go back here. And we can now position ourselves over that first set of clouds and bring in a camera and activate that. And we'll just pick a bit of an interesting camera angle maybe something like that where we can see the horizon. And when we're happy with that, we can bring in a null object and put our camera inside that. And now if we animate the position of the null in the Z axis, which is the direction we've laid all of our clouds out, we can start flying through the clouds like so. And I might just straighten out the camera so it's not pointing out to the side and put that right in the center as well. And now we can grab the null and set the keyframe at zero on the Z axis. Then we'll move ahead to the end of our timeline here, which is 240 frames long or 10 seconds at 24 frames per second. And we need our null to travel along the Z axis exactly 140 centimeters, which again is the length of one of our cloud sections. And we'll set a keyframe there. And now if we play this back, everything loops perfectly except for this bit right in the distance here. But when we render this off as volumes in Octane, we won't actually see that because the puffier clouds are going to cover that horizon. So let's re-enable our volume builders again and we'll get this ready to render. And here we are with the Octane Live Viewer ready to go. And I've just added a simple Octane Daylight to light our scene. But we can't see any clouds yet because we need to tell Octane to render these as volumes. So to do that, let's right click on one of these and add an Octane object tag, which makes those clouds visible straight away. However, they are a little bit faint, so we might need to increase the volume density. But first, let's copy this tag to all four sets of clouds. And we can edit them all at once by selecting all of these together. Then under the particle rendering tab, Octane's already detected that these are volumes. So we're getting our voxel options down here. So we'll just leave all of these on the default settings, but for the voxel size, if you remember, we set all of these to one centimeter. So let's do the same again here, which doesn't look like it did too much, but it will allow us to keep that extra detail we added before. But to control the density, we'll need to come down here and add a volume medium, which instantly gives us a bit more density. And we've also now got a shader down here to control that. So let's open that up in the Octane node editor. And you can see that's already plugged in a scattering and absorption node for us, which we do need for rendering off volumes. But if we click on the volume shader itself, we can use the density and volume step to control the density of our clouds. So if we drop the step length down to 0.03, our clouds become much more dense and a lot more cloud-like. Although our voxels are looking a little bit blocky, but we can fix that easy enough by going back in here and decreasing the voxel size even further. So we could just drop that value and fire off a render, but Octane actually has a fairly new displacement feature we can use to add even more details to our clouds. So let's take a quick look at that back in our shader. 
where we're looking for the OSL displacement settings here. And if we click on this button, it's going to plug an OSL texture node into the displacement channel, which gives us this little code here, which basically generates displacement noise. And just like in the noise shader we looked at earlier, we can tweak the look of that noise down here in the parameters. So we'll start by increasing the amount, which does start to have an effect on those clouds. Then I'll just put a few values in here I tried earlier. And just like that, we've got some much more interesting looking clouds in our scene. However, this hasn't been applied to the clouds back here, which I think is because if we go back over here, the OSL displacement has only been applied to this first set of clouds down here in the volume shader under displacement. And you can actually see the displacement pattern that's being generated by that OSL texture here. So we'll just need to apply this to the other clouds by grabbing the object tags on those and just copying this one onto these. And there we go. We now have our looping flying through cloud scene all set up. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.